Hello, James Pukyak. Hello, Natasha. <laughs> um, you were just telling me about spending so much time on the Anderson River. Why don't you uh, tell me about when you were first out there? Well, the first time I went out there was about 1980, and I had a good friend, an elder, Gordon Naviak, um, took me and my family out to the um, Crosby Lake area to do some bush trapping. And while we were out there, he laid out on a map all his old trap line routes. And he only spent the one season there with me. Basically, he taught me how to bush trap. And from the information he gave me of where he used to travel and, and what he trapped up there, he drew out on a map for me. And, and, and that's how I ended up down at the Anderson River Forks, was from uh, uh, old Gordon he used to um, trap lots up there. And um, that's how I found my way down to the Anderson River Forks. And from there, I just kept on using areas that uh, he, he showed me on the map. So where's your camp down there? The camp is right at the Anderson Forks, right where the Carnwath, the Iroquois, Wolverine River, they all flow into the Anderson, which flows out to the um, Wood Bay area. Mm -hmm. How did you choose that campsite? Pardon me? How did you choose that place for a camp? Um, one was, uh, it had a good landing spot. The water was deep enough for a float plane. And also, it was a really, really good landing strip on, right on the gravel itself, so I was able to fly out on Tundra wheels or on pontoon plane. And um, it was really very good fishing there. Um, it was good all around, a lot of wildlife, yeah. So you're out there all seasons? I spent about four, four, maybe five months of, this, of the year out there. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca was saying that Oftentimes the kids were out there for you know a good part of the year as well. Yeah, we actually because Maureen was a teacher um, when we had our children out there with us, they practically they grew up out there in their younger years and and um, they, they didn't lack their education because Maureen taught them mm -hmm. school out there. And so, um, who else was out there when you were out there? Billy Jacobson was in the, in the vicinity around the area there. Uh, John Carmichael from McClavick was up there. Jordan Elias was a little bit further down the river from where I was. So there was about four or five different people that, that mm -hmm. spent the whole se trapping season out there. Mm -hmm. So mostly were you trapping Martin? Mostly Martin, yeah. Mm -hmm. And is that because that's the uh, pays the best? Well, Martin trapping is really so much. Um, not easier, but there's more abundance of marten, and, and there was a lot of other animals like foxes, colored foxes, wolves, wolverine, and whatnot. But uh, marten, when you travel marten, is so much easier to work with the fur. Very little flushing is needed, so um, and uh, they were they were easy to to work with. Mm -hmm. And so when you were out there, you were basically feeding your family off the land as That's well. That's right. Yeah, we lived off the land. We just brought our basics with us, like coffee, tea, flour, sugar, and stuff like that. Um, but uh, everything else came from the land. Fish, moose, caribou, ptarmigan. Later you uh, you left the area, and why was that? Well, it just got too expensive to fly out there. I had, like when you go into the bush to, to start the traffic season, you usually go before freeze up, and that requires uh, taking an aircraft out there. And the price of a plane charter just rose so drastically that it was because I didn't have the funds to, to charter a plane anymore, it was just too costly. I still go out there once in a while, when, you know, but I don't spend the amount of time I used to. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us about Fort Anderson? Fort Anderson, I, I just started uh, hearing a little bit more about the area. I've never actually seen it itself, but uh, and to my knowledge it's a little bit, probably about 30, maybe 40 miles north of And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience? What was it like for you to handle the McFarland collection in Washington? Oh, it was it was quite uh, quite amazing for me. You know, when when we were down at the uh, Smithsonian there to, to actually see and touch um, the weapons, the clothing that our ancestors used. Um, what made me so much more interested in that was like uh, uh, 
uh, the weapon that they used in those days is so much different than what we use nowadays. For for one to to harvest uh, an animal and an animal, regardless of what type of animal it is, you have to be so much closer, you know, to in order for you to harvest it. Where nowadays with the high powered rifles and that, you know, you you got a hundred, two hundred yard shot sometimes where with those bows and arrows and, and the harpoons and whatnot that they used, you had to be so much closer to to what you were trying to harvest. You know. And you, you usually didn't have a backup. You know, your bow and arrow, you might have four or five extra arrows. But with your harpoon, you only got the one the one uh, chance at it. So if you missed that initial um, chance at, at what you were trying to harvest, you know, you basically weren't able to, to get it. So their skill was amazing. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think about the website project? I think that's going to be a real awesome project and I'm really glad to see the, the youth involved uh, with the elders and and um, the, the project itself. Uh, I think a lot of, all of us are really looking forward to the finalization of it to, to um, expand our culture and, and, and Resources and the, the things that our ancestors used to do years ago. Thanks, James.